Hi, this is Mr Cooper with a quick guide on how to access the school systems when working from home. There's a couple of systems that you'll need to be able to get onto to be able to effectively attend online lessons, access work, hand work in and communicate with your teachers. Fortunately, these are all accessed by the same username and password. The main part of this is Office 365. This offers loads of different apps to school, some of which you'll have used already. The main ones of these are Outlook, which is used for email, OneDrive, which is for saving files to and moving work between home and school, OneNote, which you may have used in your computing lessons, and most importantly at the moment is Teams, where you'll be able to access live lessons. Office 365 also gives you access to online versions of Word, PowerPoint and Excel, which allow you to do work wherever you are, on whatever device, regardless of software you've got installed. You can also use Office 365 to download full versions of these apps to PC, Mac, iPhone or Android. There's also Show My Homework. Now Show My Homework is no longer called this, it's now called Satchel One. You'll have noticed that your apps have updated and are now called Satchel One and the website says this as well, so it's something to bear in mind. Now to log on to either of these systems is relatively simple. We'll start with Show My Homework. So there's two ways of accessing this, either with the app or with the website. On the app, you have to first of all type in the name of the school and it allows you to tick it. We can see here in this picture, we've ticked Chase Terrace Academy. On the right hand side, we can see the example going through the website. We don't have to type in the school name, just click on student. You do not have to type in your username or password at this stage. If you type in your username and password at this stage, it will not work. You need to press the sign in with Office 365 button, which looks like that. If you type in your username or password into the normal login box, it will tell you it's wrong. You must press sign in with Office 365. When you've done that, you'll be taken to a screen asking for your email address. Now your email address is basically the same as your school login name except it has at chaseterraceacademy.co.uk at the end. So that exact same username that you would type in into any school computer is what you would type into here just with at chaseterraceacademy.co.uk on the end. Remember your username is the first letter of your first name, the first four letters of your surname and then your four digit exam number. This should be written down in your student planner. Once you've typed that in, it will ask for your password. We can see what this screen looks like on a computer or a phone. Now there's a few things to look for to make sure that we've typed in the right email address. We can see on both of these there is a school logo and on the computer it even shows us a picture of the school in the background. If you don't see a school logo on this screen it means that you've typed in your email address wrong. Either you've typed in an incorrect username or you've misspelled at chaseterraceacademy.co.uk. Press the back arrow and type it in again. Your password is exactly the same password as you would use to log in to any school computer. So if you were to sit down at a computer in a classroom in a lesson, you type in your username and your password, this is the exact same password. One of the most useful tools for accessing schoolwork when at home is going to be Microsoft Teams, because Teams allows teachers to remotely deliver lessons to you that you can take part in and watch again later. Now Teams is best downloaded and installed on a device. If you're using a PC or a Mac, you can go to the ICT services menu on the school website, click on download Teams, and there's a really easy link there. If you're on a tablet or phone, it can be found in the relevant app store, so the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. It is absolutely far better if you have the app and you're signed into Teams. So you need to make sure that that's set up, you've signed in, and it looks like you would expect it to before any scheduled lessons start. That should make life a lot easier for you. Once installed, you'll need to sign in. And signing in works just like we showed you before with Office 365. It's the same email address, it's the same password. It's always that email address and password. 
Once you signed in, it will look something like this. It may take you to a different section when you sign in, but the main area is basically the same. So what we're looking at here is a list of all the teams that are available to me. So once logged in, you will see teams that you had access to. That may be for some or all of your classes, depending on which your teachers are using. On the left hand side, we've got the menu bar with different tabs that you can access in the app. Activity shows you things that have happened recently in each team and you can click on a piece of activity to go to that team. So whether that be a teacher has scheduled a lesson or sent a message or uploaded files, it will display in the activity section. Teams, as we've just seen, will show you a list of all of your teams that you click on to go and look at all the different sections, which we'll look at in a moment. Calendar is incredibly useful because if a teacher scheduled a live lesson, it will show up in the calendar. And it's a very easy way to join it quickly because you can just click on the calendar, click on the lesson and select join. The assignment section also will list any assignments that have been set through Teams. It's likely that a lot of your work will be set in Show My Homework instead though. So let's look at what a team looks like. So here I've gone into one of my classes. The post section, which we can see now, is where any recent activity will appear. So any messages from your teachers, any work that's been set, files that have been shared, or lessons that have been scheduled or are currently running. If there's a class currently happening, it will display in this section and you will be able to join it. If one's just been scheduled, it will display it in here. The file section is really useful because a teacher may want to share a PowerPoint or a worksheet with you. We've also got a class OneNote in the class notebook section and the assignment section. You can go back to the main list of teams just by clicking on that all teams back arrow in the top left hand corner. There's also a back and forward arrow in the very top left hand corner just like when using Chrome in case you ever get lost. So I'm in the calendar section in Teams and we can see that I've scheduled an example lesson with myself so it shows up on the right time and day with the teacher and a description. Clicking the join button takes us to a couple of settings to configure before we join the lesson which looks something like this. You don't have to worry about most of it, just click on the computer audio button, that tells it you'd like to be able to listen to and speak to the lesson using your computer. You can also decide if you'd like your camera switched on or off before the lesson starts here. Remembering that whilst you're welcome to put your camera on if you want to, everyone else in the lesson will be able to see you. When we click the join button, it will either take us to a waiting room or to the lesson. If the teacher hasn't yet started the lesson, you'll stay in the waiting room until they start it. So once we're in the lesson, it will look something like this. Our main area here will show us either a combination of people in the lesson, the teacher's camera or the teacher's screen if they're sharing it. We've got some buttons to control the lesson from your end at the top, which we'll look at in a second, as well as this bar on the right. So let's have a look at the buttons across the top to start with. We can see here's the chat button. You may not want to contribute by speaking to the whole class, so you can press this button and it will bring up this chat bar across the right hand side where you're able to take, type a message, attach files, or reply to a conversation in the lesson. Anything you type in here will be visible to everyone, including the teacher, and it is saved for anyone to look at after the lesson is finished as well. There is also a button here, it's a picture of a hand, that is the hands up button. So if you'd like to ask a question or you'd like the teacher's attention for some reason, press that button. The teacher will then see that you've got your hand up, they're able to then unmute you, um, or they could stop and talk to you in the chat if needs be. We've also got controls here to turn your camera and microphone on and off at any point. The teacher may disable your microphone unless you've put your hand up, so the microphone button may not work. And when the lesson has finished, you can leave using the leave button. If you have any problems with anything that I've just shown you, make sure that you've spelled your username and your full email address correctly. You're using the correct password, which is the same password that you'd use any time inside school and it's always worth trying closing an app and reopening it or turning your phone or computer off and on again and trying again.